these are my revamps of each member of Hero Factory Alpha Team, and today I want to show off each of them and go over some design elements and compare them to the original sets that they're based off of. So here we have the Alpha Team Leader Preston Stormer. I decided to make him taller than the rest of the heroes, but as you can see here, he's not quite as tall as Stormer XL. Just because I felt that would have looked kind of awkward. The, the, apart from the colors, the only real design element I brought over from Stormer XL were the scout drones on his arm. The main weapon is based off of his 1.0 form with the ice blade and the chainsaw on the bottom. And he has a shoulder cannon that I took from his brain attack form, though my cannon is only one shot. However, I have tried to make it slightly retractable. And next up we have William Ferno. Inferno is a little bit of an outlier. Most of my heroes are based out their breakout forms, but it's not really the case with Inferno. The only real similarity are the chest plates. Instead, my real primary base for this figure was his 1.0 counterpart. Not only did I retain the weapons and I made the armor color the same as his 1.0 arms, I also decided to give him his motorcycle. I'm pretty happy with the way this thing came together with the Toamata torso and the uh, seat that I came up with, and it rolls pretty well too. I have two major issues with the original Freno bike. The first one being that the handlebars move independently of the front of the bike. And the second one being just how big and bulky it is. Like, I definitely think I did a good job of slimming mine down. And here are both Ferno bikes with Ferno right next to each other. Let me just get uh, this one out of the way real quick. Something I did forget to mention is that mine has a kickstand, just like the original. Uh, and the weapons I decided to just stick on the back because I really had nowhere better to put them, but it does give a cool flame exhaust look. Here we have Jimmy Stringer. Stringer has always been kind of a weird character in the series. He started off as black and orange, but then got moved to black and yellow, and then was black and blue in Breakout. Um, I decided to take the transparent element from Breakout Stringer and decided to make his accent color transparent orange. I took the big two-handed weapon from Breakout and used it as a large sonic boom blaster, though unfortunately this time it doesn't look like a guitar. And I decided to give him shoulder mounted speakers to kind of carry over the speaker design that the original had. Duncan Bulk is up next. While this is very clearly based on his breakout form, 
I do have a couple issues with the breakup form, most notably the colors, uh, and specifically the sheer lack of silver on the model, so I incorporated a lot more silver, as well as keeping the orange and gunmetal elements. I did discard the black and gold, however, so. And I also decided to keep the hero cuffs on there because they looked cool. I did decide to mount a gun on his left arm as kind of a cute little reference to his original form. And I decided to go ahead and make him dual wield as kind of a reference to his bulk versus vapor form. And next up we have Natalie Breeze. Unlike the other figures in this collection, this one is really only based on her breakout form. I had decided to get rid of the white and make her color scheme only red and green. I changed her weapons around a little bit because I don't like the sword and shield being on the same hand, so I decided to convert the shield into a little blaster and shorten the sword down a little bit. I also opted to give mine a jetpack because I feel like it's a little more believable than the rocket boots. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this figure. I think it turned out pretty good looking. And next up we have Mark Surge. So the color scheme is heavily based off of his brain attack form. I just love the way the blue and silver looks with that uh, transparent green, and I'm not a really big fan of the lime green that they definitely overused in Breakout Surge, though I did use the chest plate and pointed shoulder elements from that set. Apart from colors, my Surge doesn't really have a whole lot in common with the brain attack variant, so I'm just going to get him out of here. Uh, the Surge that uh, this figure is based off of the most is his 1.0 form. I feel like the amount of silver that I used uh, references the original pretty well, as well as the swords, uh, giving them the same kind of look. Alright, next up we have Nathan Evo. This figure is heavily based off of his breakout form, but I decided to incorporate the purple from EVO 2.0, not only because it's very iconic within the community, but because it's a lot more distinct than the red and blue that LEGO gave him later on. I think using the transparent blue head uh, definitely helped with that. Looking at LEGO's breakout EVO and my breakout EVO, uh, mine is essentially just a bulkier figure with a little bit more yellow. I decided to use a limb with a uh, ball joint for his upper arm so I can uh, pose the tank arm a lot better than the original. And next up we have Julius Neck. I decided to make this a more streamlined version of his breakout counterpart, 
I decided to go and remove the gunmetal just because I felt like it didn't fit in as well as the silver that I used. I swapped the laser cutter out for an energy shield because I felt like the laser cutter was kind of redundant as a projectile weapon. Something that I am pretty happy with is the way that this antenna turned out using a wrench, a screwdriver, and a lightsaber hilt. I think it adds a little extra detail that I think turned out pretty good looking. And as a cute little extra, I decided to give him a spare wrench. But this figure has one more tool at his disposal. This is the Nex Rescue Machine. I felt like it was pretty important to be able to store the weapons on the mech. So the only real thing that has in common with a next set is that it has a laser, but the, the real comparison that this is based on would be Jet Raka. And when I say based on, I mean kind of a critique of. My biggest problem with Jet Raka is that the mech itself doesn't have any kind of leg system, so it's just the figure standing up in the mech, but the figure is covered in friction adding joints, making the legs really long and the whole figure look very awkward. So with my next rescue machine, I made something so that a complete figure would be able to sit in there and his feet are just connected to the leg because he's a robot, so he can just do that. I decided to give the rescue machine a big saw blade and a big hand so we can cut up and move rubble to help civilians in a natural disaster or a villain attack. And I decided to add some shoulder cannons for some extra firepower. Last and certainly not least is Daniel Rocca. The heaviest inspiration for this figure is, of course, his breakout form. I decided to keep the crossbow as his primary weapon, uh, and the silver hands as well. I decided to swap the arms that the crossbow and shield are on so that the crossbow is on the same side as the aiming reticle on his eye. Brain Attack also had a bit of an influence on this, specifically the spinny shield. I decided to make a similar spinning shield design, but with retractable blades. The green armor being used is also directly taken from the brain attack form. As for the green core, I felt like it was the best stand-in for the color scheme I had going on, and while I could have used white, the 3.0 nameplate is a very similar color. And Raka XL had two of them, so I decided it just fit just fine. But yeah, that's it for my Hero Factory Alpha Team. Uh, stay tuned next time, uh, or when I cover my 2010 villains. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, make sure you leave a like, uh, comment down below if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, my dog is whining. Uh, make sure you check out the subreddit and Discord. Uh, until next time, I'm out.